met a gypsy. So we did outdoors and Jackson and I did it together in 2016. Yeah. And that was, I mean, we could write a book on that. It was, <laughs> it was just next level. So back to training, my brother was riding for Husky. So I went from KTM, uh, because he was riding orange brigade KTM and then he got the Husky ride. So then he was riding Huskies and, uh, and so my dad bought me Huskies and, yeah, I did all the nationals in 2016. Did you do 250 or 450? 250. Yeah. Yep. And how'd you go? Like, how was it? It was brutal. It, it was <laughs> like every round was like life questioning life's decisions. Really? Oh, yeah. Jackson and I both were just going through the ringer because Jackson's an awesome rider. Like, he's good. He's really good. Yeah. And he was, do you remember his best finish in Supercross? Like fifth, maybe, in a 250 yeah. main? Well, yeah. I, he, there was one year like it was gonna be his year yeah and he got fourth in the first heat race i'm pretty sure at anaheim one Sick. went straight into the main and then i think he got hurt in the main mm. and i think that that was pretty much like it kind of went down from there but, but he, he had, had this, he, ha- the, he had a couple top tens 250 oh heaps of top tens yeah yeah like i think the year before that he yeah. was like seventh eighth six yeah. like he actually i, I thought he was probably going to be some people are going to start looking at him yeah. at him for a ride and he was using chad at xpr yeah and, and before, he was getting starts remember he was yeah. getting all those all those starts yeah and he that was before i knew of chad you know now chad's a pretty popular guy doing yeah. motor concepts engines and lots of other engines that's would have been one of the first dudes using for chad chad yeah i think yeah he lived with chad for a little bit yep. and then my mom, so she's from Sweden. She can speak a bunch of different languages and she could pretty much understand any language. and get Except it. Australian. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so she met, somehow met Jackson's parents and we ran into Jackson at Paula one day and, and then it was like, Jackson was super shy and, uh, which is crazy now. Like. Yeah. Yeah. And my mom, you know, offered for him to come live at our house and stay in, stay in a room. And I'm like, think my brother and I look at each other like, well, one, he's super shy. Like we don't even we barely even talked to him before. Like we said something and he was super shy. And then, uh, two is like, he's pretty fast. Like <laughs> yeah. he wants to live with us. That, that's cool. You know? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, how good was he at whoops back then? He was gnarly. He was really gnarly. So gnarly. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the, the beginning of Jackson coming to live with us. And he was in his shell pretty shy, but then quickly we opened him up. Like my brother and I always had friends over. Eric Yorba was training with us. Yeah, at that's Eddie's. right. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, and Eric's a talker. We're all, you know, fun loving guys. So we had a blast training and, together. And, and Jats is not shy at all. No. But just, just complete strangers. At least back then back then i feel like now he's just fully no, no. yeah changed I, completely because i didn't know him before that so i just yeah. knew him as shy and then he when he left our house he was not shy you know yeah. and so I, <laughs> yeah. I took credit or we, yeah. we took credit for like bringing him out of his shell and then he just kept going on the rev limiter you know but yeah. uh but yeah when he came to live with us we had ping pong table basketball in the backyard and and uh so we just had a blast all the time and and yeah so long story short that was that was pretty fun um but what how he struggled that year what was the year that my dad came over with him was it earlier than that before 2016 14 yeah. or 15 maybe probably cuz yeah. he came to live with us uh you know 20 end of 2015 2016 yeah. Yeah. and we did outdoors in 2016 i don't remember how he did in supercross that year but he was struggling i was struggling and he was struggling and going a lot faster than me but uh but we every round i mean we'd be sitting in a little blow up ice bath uh together you know questioning our our decisions and, yeah. uh, and you know wondering if we should even keep going to the next round at every every round basically well it's so gnarly the way that you guys had to drive yourselves there and the mechanic work and the flat tires on the highway and the trailer it's just one thing after another Dude. and then you're just getting your ass kicked on the weekends yeah and like I remember how dejected he was. Oh yeah, back there. he's like, bro, this is no joke. No, no, dude. I mean, like I said, we could really write a book. Like I'll try to summarize it. Uh, you know, I decided to race last minute. We do Hangtown, we do Glen Helen, um, and then we do Thunder Valley. And my dad had we had a Sprinter van, and my brother was racing amateur, and he was you know needed the Sprinter van to go to the practice tracks and stuff, and. Uh, we had a motorhome, and so my dad bought this motorhome with a garage in the back for us to go race the nationals in, and it was really sick. But 
we bought it. So we raced first three rounds, went to Thunder Valley in a van. Scott Lillis was my mechanic at the first two rounds, 2016, Hangtown, Glen Helen. Um, and, uh, and then we bought the motor home. Uh, my mechanic Avery came and he was going to do the nationals with me because Scott couldn't travel the whole way. He needed to stay with my brother. So Avo, he trained at, uh, Scott Atkins motocross, supercross school. Yeah. And base, have you heard of that school? Uh, wait, where is that S- at? It's in West Virginia, right next to racer X. Ah, uh, yep, yep, yep. It's like a factory. It's like MMI, but for supercross and motocross. Yep, yep, yep. Those guys, Scott does an awesome job training guys and getting them to be full factory mechanics like right away. Yeah. So, uh, so Avery, you know, grew up riding, did a handful of races in the middle of Wyoming, in the middle of nowhere, you know, and he was big into hockey growing up, but he didn't know a lot about motocross. He, he liked it and his buddy was going to go to the school. So he's like, oh, shoot, I'll, I'll go to the school, whatever, you know? Yeah. So he goes to the school for a year. He turns out to be the best, like one of the best guys, uh, we're looking for a mechanic. I had a mechanic for a little while getting ready to race these, these, the nationals. And I had to let him go. I was like, dude, you're stressed out about this little stuff, but we're about to drive across. Yeah, this is about to get way gnarlier. Way gnarlier than what we're dealing with in Menifee. Like we're going to drive all 12 rounds in the van. So I let him go. We needed a new mechanic. Avery flew in right after Glen Helen. Scott taught him a couple things. We went to Thunder Valley. I lose I, I blew up my engine in the first moto and he has to do a full engine swap oh. for moto two. And, uh, that's his, you know, warm up, getting to know me and stuff. Yeah, welcome to the team. So then we go home, we pick, I dr- me and Avery drive to Bakersfield from Menifee. We pick up a, a motor home on our weekend off. Like the first, you do three <laughs> rounds, you get one weekend <laughs> yeah. off, pick up the motor home, drive it back to our house, pack it for a week and then or pack it for a couple days leave on like wednesday to drive all the way to pennsylvania to high point which i didn't even realize how far pennsylvania was at the time you know i'm just like oh high point where's it at the okay pennsylvania opposite. i'm like geez all the way across you know and then i made the decision like we could drive the flatlands uh through the bottom of the country or we could go you know back through thunder valley and back to the the, the mountains and it's like that'd be way cooler of a drive you know and so we took my van sprinter van the motorhome and I had two buddies helping us. So me and Avo were driving. And then my buddy, Mark Hansen, who helped me drive yeah. down the coast. Yeah. And then my buddy, Tyler Simcox was along for the ride to help us set up, tear down and like cross the country, you know? So we get through the mountains, motorhome's doing great. The motor was fresh. We bought it fresh. I mean, this guy just took it to Sturgis and back. So it's a fresh renegade garage in the back gnarly lift gate the lift gate was gnarly like it's one of the real deal ones that yeah like you can't just let anybody operate it or else they could jack stuff up real quickly like you got to line it up perfectly and with the buttons to make sure it's on there right you know so we get it i learned how to use it the guy left the thing in his garage for years and just took it to sturgis and that was it so it's just sat in the garage on the concrete so the tires were fresh looking, but they weren't fresh because they had been on there for a long time. Yeah. And we make it through the mountains. Luckily, we're in the middle of Missouri, in the middle of nowhere. My buddy, Mark Hansen, who's the most qualified guy to drive it because he's got the license. He's got uh, a lot of truck experience driving for my dad. And he's just, a, he's just a good guy, operator of equipment. So he's driving. My buddy, Tyler Simcox. No, Avery. Avery's in the passenger seat. Going straight in the middle of Missouri, where Forkner's from, right? and straight line luckily steer wheel right steel wheel blows out front right and completely blows out the whole hood of the motorhome oh. is flipped up to where you can't see the road anymore luckily it's straight yeah. and luckily you're not going down a hill and then my buddy's trying to hold it with going 75 or something with a massive rig full of stuff and uh blows up the hood blows up the side dents the frame there's like you could see from avery's passenger seat to the floor. You can no see, you can see the, the asphalt. Yeah. And, uh, so they're all freaked out. They called me and my buddy Tyler who are ahead of them just a couple miles in the van. We loop around, can't believe it. So now we got this fresh rig, all of our race bikes. We got Jackson's practice bike in there and Jackson and his mechanic Chongo, we call them. Yeah. Uh, they're already, you know, almost a high point ahead of us, but he's had a small van, you know, hitch rack. So we took some of his stuff for him and, 
Yeah. So we, we have to leave our brand new motor home. It gets towed to this junkyard, basically. It's like just, it's not brand new, but it's fresh looking, like white, sick, just yeah. blown away that I could even, you know, we could even pit out of something like this. Yeah. And now it's totaled, the frame's dent, and we have to leave it in this junkyard. And <laughs> uh, so we get our race bike out, we get gear out, we hop in the van and go to High Point. Dude, High Point was gnarly. I mean, just a gnarly, gnarly track. Deep ruts, you know, yeah. everything. So suffered through High Point, questioning life's decisions, you know. And then Jackson needed his practice bike. And it's <laughs> I a, remember all of this. You remember like, this? Yeah, oh, yeah. It's yeah, in yeah, Missouri. Yeah. Practice bikes in Missouri. Uh, Avery. He who, blew up something, didn't he? I think he did. He yeah, probably he blew, blew up an engine. I think he blew up his race bike. Yeah, and needed the practice And then bike. had to drive all the way back. Dude, it's next level, <laughs> dude. It's next level. So we're in High Point. Um, yeah, then Jackson. I hop in the van with Jackson and Chongo and drive 16 hours or something back to Missouri on Sunday after the race because I can't tell them how to operate the lift gate because they're going <laughs> to break it you know there's no way they can do it and that's the only reason why me a racer in the middle of my rookie season has to drive 16 hours to sunday after the race and i'm packed in the back of their van you know it was just two guys living you know van van life so then it was three guys van life back to missouri we spend the day there unloading the rig unloading the van we (laughs) we buy a hitch uh we had a hitch rack we bought a you know rack for the top of the van to put more stuff up there we get his bike out um, I go for like a road bike ride and yeah, it was like super hot in the middle of Missouri for the day. So then we load back up, we drive from there to Daxton Bennick's house in, is he in South Carolina? Either that or North Carolina, one of the two. Yeah. Somewhere over there. And then, uh, we go to Daxton Bennick's house. We ride there for a couple of days. Like Jackson, and I just drove 16 hours, raced on Saturday, drove 16 hours, unload the rig, you know, and then in the, in the junkyard. And then we drive whatever 16 hours again to Jack Daxon Benning's house because we think we need to ride before Muddy Creek that weekend. <laughs> so we ride really six tracks, and because it's so much fun, it's like it's you like, just smoked yourself. Well, let's ride a little bit more because yeah. it's pretty sick, you know. And so then we just smoke ourselves there. We go to Muddy Creek. We're like, you know, yeah. So then we uh, then we go back to Daxon's house for another couple of days before going to the next round. And then we spend a lot of time in Michigan, staying at uh, Craig Bigelow's house. And that was a lot of fun. And we had a ton of fun up there riding Baja acres and, uh, going barefoot water skiing in between some rounds. And it was a good location. Actually, Michigan was to hit red bud and not too, too, you know, Southwick. And yeah, so that was a lot of fun. We're excited to announce the launch of our new membership site, gypsytales.com packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125. Gypsy Gang.